Welcome to Talking Comics, where we are bagged, boarded, and pre-recorded. I'm Ryan. I'm Sean. Thank you guys for coming back once again. We are here, we're going you know, to be doing our part two of our Civil War discussion. Civil review. War 2? Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> it's an automatic reaction just to say that when yeah. there's a 2 in it. Yeah, it's hard not to. I know. <laughs> not to Boogaloo. It's right um, there with bubble wrap. You can't not <laughs> pop it. <laughs> yeah. So, we're just going to continue right where we left off uh, last podcast. Um, with the daring escape? Yes, with the daring escape. Uh, it's kind of crappy to make. Uh, it probably sucks, you know. Wait, you wait a week to hear us talk about the other half of a movie, but gives you time to see it. Yeah, more time to see it. Uh, that way, you know, you spend night like, get you finally get to see it a week after we air, and now the second one's up, and you can just watch them back to back. And it's part of our master plan. That first yeah. one was uh, we were so excited we just saw it. Yeah. We're kind of all over the place and scattered. <laughs> Nobody would know what the hell we were talking about, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And they, now they got time to see it, maybe it would be a little more streamlined. Yeah. It's like, couldn't you fucks do it the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you'll be able to follow along with us. <laughs> uh, disclaimer once again, spoilers. <laughs> it's been a week, people. Yeah. You should have seen it by now. You should have just listened to our spo- our spoiler warning in last week and just went and seen it. Alright? Alright. We can do a public service, right? Yeah. Should, we, should I do the countdown again? Yeah. Alright. Or, you know what? How about we have a... I remember you were saying a couple weeks back, special guest. How about we have Mr. Walken do the countdown? Oh, you... Let's have him come yeah. on in. Walken? Come in! Yeah. I'm, I'm here Mr. To, Walken, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm, I'm here to do a... Uh, a spoiler countdown and some yes it's basically counting down from five All right. you've had you've had tougher more convincing roles before this should be a piece of cake for you it's or no a piece problem. of cowbell <laughs> it's no problem all right uh five four three two one spoilers. spoilers all right thank you sir thank you get the hell out of here walk in. all right walk in. hit the bricks <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> we're not- Last week, we left you at the daring escape of Bucky and Cap. Yes. Like, Black Panther was, like, right there. Yeah. Little recap. There was the big battle royale. Yes. It was yes. It was wicked awesome. <laughs> and... I think we're a little more composed now. Yeah. Well, geeking hopefully. Out of, talked about Ant-Man and Spider-Man geeking out. <laughs> we were geeking out. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it twice now. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm going to be a little vulgar. I still got a full nerd boner for this movie. Mm -hmm. A noner? (laughs) (laughs) So. I'm I'm still crusted up all over face, neck, and chest, so. (laughs) I don't, I I don't want to wipe it off yet. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, this movie, man, I mean, I've said it once, I've said it a gazillion times. Probably my favorite to date. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know what I didn't mention when I was doing my, my top five? What? Those are just the movies. Mm-hmm. Overall, my favorite... Now, this is just Marvel. Yeah. Marvel offering, still, Daredevil. That that's... This movie, though, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. It is right there with it. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Remember what we talked about last week? Baron Zemo, yeah. I would say, is not really the true villain in this movie. Yeah. Vengeance. Vengeance. And we covered, so far, Crossbones mm-hmm. with his re- tale of revenge. Check. Uh, Zemo, which we're in the middle of because he kind of intertwines through the whole movie. Half a check. Black Panther, which you get there, and then you'll see you know, what drives him. And drives him to the point where he revealed himself yeah. to the world, his true yeah. identity. Um, we haven't even got to Stark yet. Yeah. And that... You're the only person... Who... Yeah. You know, there's like five people who have no uh, real... Well, only two people who don't really have a large stakes in this war. And that's Ant-Man and Spider-Man. <laughs> 
They just got, kind of got pulled in from the sidelines. Oh, no, well, put yourself in their shoes. Well, Remember Spider-Man? Oh, come on, guys. I only got one job to do. Mr. Stark said <laughs> he doesn't want to let Mr. Stark down. That <laughs> is his idol. Well, the reason I bring up Daredevil is because, do you remember the rooftop conversation? Oh, yeah. With Punisher and Daredevil? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Or not, it wasn't not the rooftop one, The uh, on the boat. On the boat? Once you cross that line, Red... There's no coming back. Don't let vengeance consume you the way it did me. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Keep that in mind, folks. <clears throat> Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Bucky and Cap escape. Yes. Okay. They make a very daring escape, and the rest of the team is captured. And not to mention the other side of the opposite team is licking some wounds and having to get a tongue lashing from Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. And T'Challa, a.k.a. Black Panther, of well, course. he's got diplomatic immunity, so he's... Di- uh, <laughs> diplomatic immunity. <laughs> it's been revoked. <laughs> but he, not enough to where he can take time and be like, oh, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross, I'm stooging off Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> so... Like, a little back and forth with with her and Stark, you yeah. know, talking about that. Uh, they failed to bring in the team, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, why shouldn't I just arrest you? Uh, Black Widow bounced. Yeah. She's gone. She's vanished. Like, she's like... Oh, in the wind. No. Yep. As Black Widow should. Because Black Panther, you know, told what she did as yeah. far as letting, you know, helping Bucky and, and Cap escape. Uh-huh. Okay. So, at this point, with all that fighting going on... Baron Zemo has got, like, a few hours on him. So yeah. he's there, Siberia. He's got the place open. Yep. And he's inside. He has found the other winter soldiers. The winter super soldiers, I guess. Yeah. Pretty much. So, <clears throat> right off the top of your head, what was your first thought? Like, oh, I'm, I know what this guy's doing. Yeah, I, I, I was... My, my first thought was... Control, he's... control, you yeah. must learn control! <laughs> yeah. I thought he was going to take control over these guys and, you know, do some world-dominating... Typical blo- bad guy. Shenanigans. Sean Anigans. Sean Anigans. <laughs> <laughs> Typical bad guy stuff, right? Yeah. Bucky and Cap get there. What do they find? A whole lot of nothing at first. Uh, and then... This, they... So before they arrive... Uh, it's showing this back and forth between Stark and Ross. Yeah. And uh, Stark goes down to talk to, uh, you know. Jesus, I'm still jumping ahead. <laughs> I'm so excited. Stark goes and talks to uh, Falcon, who's down in the cells of... Uh, the Raft. The Raft. The Raft. They introduce the Raft. Comics, kids. Comics. Basically, it for those DC fans out there, it's like... The equivalent of, like, Bell Rev. Yes. That's right. Designed to hold these super beings. Underwater. Underwater. Bottom of the ocean. Yeah. It's pretty wicked how they, like, I, when it shows Stark going there, I'm like, where the hell is he going? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I went, went and saw it first, um, I kind of got this big sheet and grin on my face. <laughs> I went with my wife the first time. Yeah. And she's like, can a helicopter, even though it's, I know it's Tony Stark, you know? Yeah. Like, who's flying the helicopter? I'm like, it's remote. Yeah. That means Tony Stark. I, I thought that was so cool. He, well, she goes, really? Do, you, do they expect us to believe a helicopter is going to fly all the way from there to Berlin or <laughs> Siberia? I'm like, I don't, he ain't going to Siberia. I know exactly where he's going. And I'm like, oh, 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 they're doing it! <laughs> the raft! <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's in there and he talks to uh, Falcon and he uses... He's trying to get some info on where Cap and Bucky went, and he uses his little computer watch to uh, disable the audio for the, you know, cameras, so he can talk to Falcon without Ross listening in, and he gets the information from him. Not to mention the the heavy scene again. Tony Stark goes through a lot emotionally. He yeah. had to admit he was wrong. <laughs> yeah, which is hard for anybody, especially especially a, Stark. An egomaniac. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, that could have been a really, really tough scene. I almost <laughs> rolled a tear for that one. <laughs> Tony's admitting. And again, another, uh, speaking of that, in the prison scene. Oh, yeah. The rap scene. Hawkeye. Yeah, he was getting an earful from Clint. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't much care for Hawkeye in the first Avengers. Nobody did. Uh, I liked him more in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that speech with Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, you, uh, they really, like, showing his family really humanized him. But we know he's human. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You know what's badass for me? My best Hawkeye moment? When they introduced him in Thor. <laughs> like, holy shit, there's Hawkeye! That was pretty and awesome. And then afterwards, it's like, yeah, there's Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no, you're right, though. That speech, uh, the Age of Ultron. Oh, yeah. yeah. That I'm going out there. Because it's my job. I say that to myself in the mirror at the bathroom at work all the time. <laughs> there's nothing but a bunch of savages and animals out there. But you're going to go out there. Because it's your job. Now flush, wash your hands, and get back to work. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, he's always, he's given the, his job is, you know, his real job is giving these, uh, you know, impressive speeches to his, to his, uh, other heroes. Yeah. So he gives, you know, Iron Man the year... How, how, what, did, what did he say? It was like the, uh, oh, look, this is the uh, predictor of the future. <laughs> you know what we didn't talk about? What? During the, uh, hold on a minute. Look, I'll finish this story, which will transcend to a relapse story. All right. He's given the speech to Tony after they're all locked up. So you got Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, and Falcon. Mm -hmm. They got them locked up. And it's like, oh, uh got us locked up this is a nice place and Stark's like um I didn't expect him to put you here oh but you expected him to put us somewhere <laughs> well I did not here yeah not here this is a place for criminals and he cuts them off as criminals yeah you know it's like uh, once upon a time you and I were friends and that didn't apply to me mm -hmm. oh better watch your back around this guy it might get broken <laughs> flashing back to the airport scene the oh. daring Bucky Cap escape. Yeah. Like Falcon didn't How get did him. How did we glass, gloss over that? <laughs> um, when Bucky and Cap escape in the jet with um, Black Widow's help, they're pursued by Iron Man and War Machine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Falcon is behind them. Falcon always seems to be tailing behind everybody. He's yeah. like, what? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> and Bro Rhodey, War Machine, contacts the Vision. Yeah. And says he's got a bogey on his six, which means right behind him. Yeah, handle it. And at this point, Vision is consoling Scarlet Witch, mm -hmm. who he himself, with the help of War Machine, like, kind of fucked her up. Yeah. But it's they're touching on from the books, where Vision and Scarlet Witch do have a relationship. Hmm. So he... Somewhat for an artificial intelligence superior to all others, got distracted. Yeah. I'm sure it was that gorgeous rack. <laughs> but, uh, so he takes a shot at Falcon. Falcon sees it coming a mile away, does his little wing tuck, duck, duck and roll. Yeah. Vision hits War Machine. Mm -hmm. Knocks out his entire suit. Yeah, destroys the arc Immediately, that immediately, Falcon and Tony Stark, like, we're done playing... We're, I'm mad at you. No, I'm mad at you. And they immediately go after Rhodey. Mm -hmm. and say, but they're too late. And he hits the ground. Yeah. And st that's it. All bets are off. Like, Stark, like, I'm not chasing after him anymore. That's how Cap and Bucky get away. You yeah. Know? That's how they really got away. Falcon was right. Th him and Stark just weren't fast enough. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I was trying to console him. Stark just blows Falcon away. Yeah, just just boom! <laughs> shoots him with a blaster. And at this point, Rhodey, War Machine, is out. Mm -hmm. He's paralyzed. Yeah. Like, broke, broke, broke his back. Broke his back. His spine is just crushed. So that's the little reference from yeah. Hawkeye. Watch your back around this guy. It might get broken. Two viewings, and I totally spaced that. I know, right? <sighs> wow. So they go on and on. Yeah, you're right. Um, what is it? He talks to Wilson. Hawk, uh, Falcon gets the info. Oh, oh uh, and so... As he's, you know, walking down the line, he gets, you know... The death ear, stare from Scarlet Witch. <laughs> gets his ear full from Hawkeye. Oh, yeah. And uh, Scott Lang's like, Hank oh. Pym always told me to never trust a Stark. Oh, so Tony's like, who are you? <laughs> and a lot of people would say that. It's like, okay, 
think about what you just said. We, we both saw it. Yeah. It's like, okay, Stark's got the Ultron thing, so it's like... But if you don't remember Age of Ultron and his network around the entire world to monitor things, basically a big brother, but yeah, galactic big brother type thing, mm -hmm. how would he know about Spider-Man, but not know about Ant-Man? Yeah. I think he does know, and he was just like, not, who are you, like, legitimately, like, questioning him. It's like, yeah. who are you to me? It's like, not even your fucking technology. <laughs> Shut up, you're a burglar. <laughs> like, he knows, I think he knows everything about him. He's just yeah. like, fuck off. You know? <laughs> And because it's Paul Rudd, I love their oh their reaction. Come, come on, man! <laughs> Doesn't anybody know me? <laughs> I'm Ant Man. I, yeah, I'm Giant Man I'm now. Giant Man. Giant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that oh Paul Rudd, yeah, and Tom Holland. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I uh, I All can't. Right. So he he's going to talk to Falcon. Cuts out the audio of the cameras, so he can get the you know get the. A destination that Cap and Bucky are heading to. Because he was wrong. Yeah. He found out he was wrong. He found out he was wrong. He found out it was Zemo, not Bucky, who... that killed the king. Yeah. And, yeah. And so he wants to make things right. Yeah. Which is really his entire life's goal. He's always screwing up and then trying to correct his wrongs. Which I said this, and it's not limited to... Man of Steel or Zack Snyder's Superman or anything like that. And Tony Stark's the same way. But they do it differently where they acknowledge it and there's nothing heroic about cleaning up your own mess. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, he he gets, uh, whoa. he gets the, uh, he, they tell him that they're heading to, uh, I already forgot the name of Siberia. Uh, Siberia. Siberia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The old Hydra. Thing. Yeah, this yeah. old Hydra hideout. And so... What did he tell him? He's like, you gotta go... Um, Do you remember? No, I, I, I don't remember exactly what he said. There was something... You, you can't... You gotta go alone, and you gotta go as a friend. Yeah, yeah. You gotta go alone, and you have to go as a friend. Yeah. And he legitimately was. He, yeah. he he went. Yeah. And as he's walking out, uh, Ross says, "Did he get any info?" No, he just told me to go to hell. Yeah. And he gets into his his uh, his robot that, helicopter. That, the helicopter. Call me if you need anything. I'll put you on hold. I like to watch the light blink. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. So he gets in the helicopter. You know, takes off. Once he's clear of the uh, the raft. The raft. He uh, turns and he puts his finger on a button on like the center console of no, his. Parker, what's on it, the bottom? And it starts. He's got to suit the chopper. And I'm, I'm just sitting there. Neat. <laughs> I, oh yeah, Dude, when you and I saw it two weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked over and I saw your face light up. <laughs> like I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I want a helicopter with a suit in it. <laughs> And uh, so he flies off, and, and during this whole thing, there's like a storm going on, and he flies off, and who's tailing behind him? Black Panther. In, in, in the Quinjet. In a Quinjet. Yeah, the cloud cover. Pulled up, There's there, there was two, not one, where we talked last week, with the Spider-Man, Giant Man fight. You ever see that old movie, Empire Strikes Back, with the walkie <laughs> things on the snow? Yeah. Black Panther was pulling a Boba Fett <laughs> to uh, Tony Stark's Han Solo Millennium Falcon thing. <laughs> Remember when he did the trash compactor? Yeah. He just float off with the trash. We're going to go to Cloud City. <laughs> Boba Fett was right there in the trash. He, like, he knew. <laughs> um, yep, Boba Panther. <laughs> so, Iron Man's heading to uh, Siberia. He get, uh, And that's when they cut and show... Cap and Bucky entering the old Hydra yeah. bunker. They come in, you know, they're all being, you know, checking their blind spots. You know, they don't see anything. And as they're about to, like, go deep inside, uh, they just, like, left this elevator. And as they go deep inside, uh, they're, you know, looking around, and then they hear a sound behind them, and they turn real quick, re ready to, you know, fight. Double doors are opening. <sighs> Stark, Iron Man. Yep. And, you know, <laughs> he's, uh, 
I think that was was that one of the times he said made the Manchurian calm down Manchurian candidate. I'm that, here to oh help. yeah yeah yeah. That's why I said last week because he's like what, what was it? Because they're up and they're Bucky and Cap. I mean, in the comics is one thing, but in the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're pretty cohesive considering the last time they actually met. <laughs> Bucky nearly killed him. And then the time before that, in 1945, was like, dude, you couldn't even hold on to me when I was on a train. I fell from a train. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to work very well together. But yeah, very. At what, what does Tony Stark say? Like, he's got the shield up. Bucky's got the beat on him with his, yeah. with his gun. You seem awful defensive. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve goes, well, it's been a long day. And he's like, all right. I'm here yeah, to help. Yeah, stand down. Stand down. It's fine. And they're talking and everything. And Bucky will never take the gun off Stark. Yeah. And he looks over and goes, Jesus, for the love of God, Manchurian candidate, it's a truce here. Can't you see what's going on? You're making me nervous. <laughs> it's okay, Buck. He calls him Manchurian candidate. <laughs> for those who don't know, it's an old movie, Manchurian candidate, where he's a sleeper cell, badass James Bond type character, but he needs a trigger word to be activated. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying this movie, you know, you take the people out of costumes, man. Put it, you know, it plays like a, a espionage Tom yeah. Clancy type thriller. So they uh, a truce has been made. And yeah, they go in as a team. They go in as a as a team. So they're working together on this. They go in and they they find where the Winter Soldier used to be kept. Because now at this point, correct me if I'm wrong. They're expecting to see Baron Zemo and five. Like, soldiers. Yeah, five. They, they call them winter soldiers because hibernation, sleepers. Yeah. They're sleeper soldiers. They're, they're, they're winter super Who are soldiers. far superior yeah. to there, Bucky. Yeah, there was a uh, flashback sequence at one point where it shows uh, one of them just kicking his ass. Oh, yeah. They, 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 one of them, just, just one of them. There are five of them. Yeah. One of them kicked the crap out of Bucky. Mm-hmm. So they're going in as a cohesive team. Yeah. At this point. I mean, right. there's no none of that airport bullshit, none of everything going on. Yeah. They're going in. Water under the bridge. Yeah. They're working together. Because Stark... I mean, okay, I fucked up. I'm wrong. Yeah. Again. <laughs> you know? uh, again. So you got Winter Soldier, Captain America, Iron Man going in as a team expecting to fight five Winter Soldiers and Baron Zemo. Yeah. What do we see? I'm waiting for the big badass <laughs> fight, too. Yeah. They They show... <laughs> They, the they walk into the room, hers. and all five of the hibernating winter super soldiers have had a bullet put in their head. They're dead. They're gone. They're gone. <laughs> all their their monitor readings flatline. Baron Zemo killed them all. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, the look on their faces on the screen, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> so they, they're walking in, and then they hear over like a loudspeaker, if it's any consolation, they... They died in their sleep. I can't, I can't do a Russian accent. That was pretty good. <laughs> Yavon. <laughs> Dos vidania, comrades. <laughs> I want my bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong movie. <laughs> and they're all, you know, they're still in like, you know, and they they see him behind a, a, a glass window type thing in like this vault looking thing. Cap throws his shield at the window Bounces off, yeah, dude, that catches it, and it, you know it was. It's a bunker. It was more more or less designed in for like nuclear war. It's Hydra. Yeah, yeah. They were prepared for all contingencies, and you know he's like, this is uh, meant for a thirty ton mega bomb or whatever. And and Iron Man's like, I think I can manage that. Yeah, he's like hold on. <laughs> he starts powering up. <laughs> hold on, and he puts on this little little uh, video showing for everybody. And the first thing you hear is Iron Man say, I know that road. Remember? And that's what he was looking for from... From the very beginning. He wanted the, the mission... All from Baron head. Zemo wanted was to tear the Avengers apart. Yep. Have them destroy each other. And all, the, all along, he was trying to create strife, and he was looking for this one video to destroy the two, fo the two main founders of the Avengers... Cap and Iron Man. Tell them why, Ryan. In this video, it's the vi it's the video of the flashback sequence at the very beginning. Of Whoops. <laughs> no, tell what Baron Zemo's. 
uh, oh, Bar- Baron Zemo's backstory? Sokovia. Sokovia. Okay, so Baron Zemo was a soldier in... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In... Uh, Sokovia. Sokovia. Yeah. He lived there with his family, and uh, his family lived with his father on the outskirts of town. Yeah. Not in the big city. And during the Ultron incident, thinking, oh, they'll be fine. Nothing's going to happen to my family. He, the, everything was destroyed. Even though it was outside of the city, it was all destroyed. He didn't find his family for two days. Do you remember Age of Ultron? What he did? What he, the city lifted mm-hmm. from the rest of the world? Yeah. Being on the outskirts wasn't a good thing. <laughs> yeah. All the stuff's falling yeah. down. Oh. So his whole reason for revenge was because he's blaming them. Well, I guess it was Stark's fault that all that happened in the first place because of Ultron. But he was blaming them for the death of his of his family. You gotta keep. I mean, they. That's saw how this him. all started, and that's how this is all ending. Yeah, because remember, he, what did he do? Did he make a like a little? He made a speech saying that, uh, "Oh, my son was so happy he got to see the Iron Man flying yeah. overhead when they were driving but that, to." But that that comes uh, after. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, the scene saying, I was yeah. talking about. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. There's they puts on a video and Stark says I recognize that street. It was the video was of the Winter Soldier mission from the beginning of the movie. Explaining then it was sh- it was a footage of the Winter Soldier crashing this car and killing the people inside. And you'll and taking the and taking the serum, but you'll never guess who was inside. The Stark parents. Starks. I mean, by now you've probably seen the movie, but oh my, how could we not talk about this, right? How There's, could I not see it coming? I know. They, they keep biggest showing this ending. They showed that scene. I mean, I started thinking back after I saw that movie twice. Like, I saw it with my wife, and then you and I saw it the next day, and mm-hmm. then you've seen it again since then. Yeah. I go back and think, I go, they've mentioned it in passing. But never talked about like, how the Starks passed. Yeah. Because you see young Stark in, like, Captain America, the first Avenger. Mm-hmm. I watched, you know, Peggy Carter. So you see young Stark. Yeah. And then you see him in the videos in the Iron Man movies. Yeah. But but they never, like, explain even how, when they talked about his parents dying, yeah. you know, he said they never made it to the airport when yeah. they left for Christmas. That's the first time they, I mean, you didn't even think about it. Yeah. And that they keep showing that same scene, whether it be in video or, or flashback. Flashbacks. It's like, I call it the onion scene, where every time they show it, they just peel back a layer. Peel back mm-hmm. a layer. Peel back a layer. And, and each finally time like, you're crying a little bit more. What like, the fuck? Yeah. And first this layer, time... no problem. Second layer? Okay, I'm starting to... Yeah. Then but, they, you can finally get to the core of it at the very end, and you're like, oh my god. No and, way. And then, again... Okay, so, once again... What's what? Who's the who's the villain in this movie, Ryan? Revenge. Revenge. Vengeance. So, let, let's recap one more time. It's going to be like the nineteen ninety one video. <laughs> we got crossbones. Crossbones. Check. Zemo. Check. Black Panther. Check. Now Stark. Stark wants revenge on oh. Bucky, the Winter Soldier, for killing both of his parents. He was mind controlled at the time he had no control over his actions what did he say i don't care i don't care (laughs) and it was a very emotional scene watching robert downey jr dude that dude is how is that guy not just won every oscar ever i don't know dude he made his voice crack yeah like you and i would do anybody would do the in that moment would do the exact same thing my parents and the, remember the he didn't even say his, his parents. He you he killed my mom. Yeah, like he his killed dad my were mom. So fucked up. Yeah, yeah his mom yeah. though. <laughs> remember the other fucked up thing though? Hmm? He looks at the Cap. Tell me, did you know? Did you oh, know? Yeah. Did you know? Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh. I didn't know it was him. Did you know? <laughs> he yes. knew. He was trying to spare him. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was brutal. Oh. And that leads to the, what was, I'm assuming, supposed to be the most epic fight in the movie, but came in 
very close second. I don't, I don't have. Uh, they're all my favorites. I yeah. mean, <laughs> that one. I mean, you see it in the in the trailers too, where yeah. they're they have a Bucky or fight. They're whipping back and yeah, forth the shield. Shields and shit. going oh. back and forth. You know, so Cap's trying to like you know stop Iron Man and let Bucky escape. You know, Iron Man's wrath. They end up both having to take him on, and you know, at first they're they're wailing on Stark. You know, they're getting him. He gets him back. Uh, Bucky goes to tr- rip out the arc reactor. Stark blasts the atom- the vibranium arm right off of Bucky. Oh shoot! Yeah, oh. blows his fucking arm yeah. right off. It was wicked. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, you had it easy. <laughs> <laughs> You just lost a hand. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, then it's Iron Man. I'll give my own Empire Strikes Back reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you know, then Stark is wailing on, uh, no, not Stark, uh, I, Cap is wailing on Stark, you know, giving him the whole one, two, you know. So, he's, Stark's about to lose, so he tells Friday... You know, his the New AI guy. in yeah. his suit analyze the fight patterns, and that turns the tables. He starts to beat the crap out of Cap. <laughs> crap out of Cap. <laughs> beat the crap out of Cap. Word. <laughs> you know what that took me back, though? Analyze the, the fight patterns? It took me back to the first Avengers. Yeah. It's like, you want to go? Put on the suit. Put on the suit. Put on the suit. <laughs> Remember that? Where they were like, kind of... Yeah. And then when they got attacked, no, really, put on the suit now. <laughs> it went from like this chest bumping bravado to panic. Like, no, really, put on the suit. We need you. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, you know, you. And this fight wasn't one sided at all. Now, let me ask you something. In your opinion, if you were to just walk in, just see that scene right there. From, not the video, but immediately after the video, to the end of that fight scene. Mm -hmm. Like, not knowing the video, not knowing anything that came before it. Would you consider Stark, like, who would you think would be the bad guy? Um, As opposed to good, if you want to do black and white scenarios. Was Stark kind of evil fuck in that one? Kind of. Like, going back... Because I like how they balanced it. If you have... it Again, that's just genius story writing. Go back to the speech at the beginning of the movie. Didn't... And they even acknowledged it, too. It didn't seem kind of... Like, Stark was kind of right, and Cap was kind of arrogant in his comments. Hmm. If you think about it. I guess. Uh, does Cap not really not see the collateral damage that happens? I mean, he does, but... What do you say to Wanda in the beginning? You know, if you can't deal with the uh, loss of life, then maybe some the next time around, no lives will get saved. Yeah. That seemed kind of a little arrogant. I'm not saying he was wrong or right or anything. Yeah. I just seemed, you know, it's like um, a little irresponsible maybe. A little old-fashioned. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, old-fashioned. I was, if I was to just view that fight knowing their stances on uh, without the video as to why they're actually fighting, but just like knowing... Iron Man is pro registration. Cap is anti registration. Stark would be the villain. Yeah, dude, Stark. And Stark was kicking his ass, man. Yeah, like it all comes down to really uh, the thing that Captain America, like it makes me think of what Captain America was created for: fighting for freedom. Yeah, against uh, the con- a controlling government. That's what this fight. Was started out as. He even said that too. Remember, it's like okay, governments, you know, it's made up of people, and people have agendas. People have agendas, and you know, uh, a while back, uh, it was shortly after. You know, some of the with the Captain America movies, it's always been uh, about about that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, political undertones. Yeah. Oh, totally. And like I've heard that, like you know, the, the books are like that too. Yeah, the, some of the directors apparently have like gotten. I heard from a from, like, a co-worker at some point. Uh, you know, like, the people that worked on those kind of got the shaft a little bit. Like, got, we're getting the stink eye from the government because of these, uh, you know, the government isn't always right tones from uh, Cap. 
Okay, well, they're more arrogant than Cap, then. <laughs> I mean, yeah. They're not. Yeah. Are, are, is the government the only one that's not on the internet? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the internet gave everyone a voice and everyone an opinion. Yeah. Over half of them need to shut up. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but Cap will fight for your right to yeah. talk shit on the internet. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. Stark will just reinvent the internet. <laughs> <laughs> He'll shut down the internet and rebuild it for himself. We have the technology. <laughs> he does. <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, that that's... Oh my God. The, the, the back and forth. I mean, the, the viciousness. And I'm, again, I'm, here I am sucking Robert Downey Jr.'s dick. <laughs> I don't care. That guy, I could watch him. I've said it many times before. I could... Just listen to him read me the phone book. Yeah. You know? I the way he acts, I mean, it's just he the uh, suck me into the role. Mm-hmm. Suck me into that moment where it's like, yes, yes. I know it's just blind rage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's he doesn't care. But nobody's been really right or wrong through this whole movie. Mm-hmm. And everybody's been Everyone's... smart and stupid. Yeah. You know, made bad moves, made good moves and everything. Right now, this is his bad move, again. I mean, we've seen him do bad moves before. <laughs> but it's just like blind rage. And we would not do anything any different. Mm-hmm. You know? And he fucked him. <laughs> yeah, he was Like, the Winter Soldier is not a customer to be messed with. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony Stark fucked him up. <laughs> like, usually when you see, see Iron Man fight, it's all very kind of like strategic... He's, you know, he's hanging, a dude in a suit. You he's know? hanging back, hitting him with the blasters. He's, he's smart. Shoulder, like foot to foot, face to face, duking it out with these guys. He's got the suit, yeah. I mean, don't, uh, if none of them were in the, if he didn't have the suit, he wouldn't last a minute. Yeah. But he's smart, but you can see him he, not using his smarts. Yeah, he's just in using the it. suit. Yeah, he's just using he's the just suit. Firing and punching. Oh, my God. And it was. Badass. It was like Hulk in the suit. <laughs> it was like Hulk in the suit. <laughs> it was a really, uh, really great scene. And, you know, just as uh, Stark's about to win, Cap turns it around on him. Flips flips him, you know, ass over tea kettle. Well, Buffy, or Buffy. Buffy, <laughs> Buffy the vampire slayer shows up. She shows up. <laughs> Stakes them all. Turns out they're vampires the whole time. That's it. That's it. End scene. Roll credits. Especially Cap and Bucky. They've lived so long. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Bucky, remember he grabs the leg. Yeah. And then that's when Cap starts pummeling with the sh- with the shield. Yeah. And uh, cracks his, his helmet. Yeah. Rip Cracks the helmet, rips it. Right and off. He thinks he's going to, like, just bash his yeah. skull, man. He's like this. He's got this shield, like, you know, it was, he wasn't, it was, like, he was ready to decapitate. Like, he had the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. He was going to, you know, take a little off the top. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Stark brings up his hands to cover his face. Yeah. And... He brings it down and destroys the arc reactor in yes. his chest. Fucking shuts him down like that. And, you know, they they kind of lie there for a moment. Exhausted. Bloody, beaten. Yeah. Just tired. All, all messed up. And what was it? Cap gets up, scoops yeah. Bucky up, yeah. walks away. And Stark's it. You can't take that. That's the government's property. He's talking about the shield. The shield. So Cap just sets it on the ground. And you leaves. don't deserve that. My dad made that. Remember? My father made that. He just fucking gives him the side eye, drops it on the ground, and walks off. Oh, that was a great way <laughs> to end that scene. It was like the... And that was one of the first times, like, in all of the Iron Man appearances where Stark really, like, ever brought up his father. And, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. They've never been like, close, he, he's, ever. Like, yeah, my dad, he started the company. And, you yeah. Know, uh, but it's never just been like, my, that was my, <laughs> it sounded like a little a 12-year-old. That's my dad's. Put it down. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's why we're not Robert Downey Jr., man. He yeah. delivered that shit like, yeah. oh. <laughs> had, it been, had it been any other actor, 
It probably would have been... It probably really would have sounded like a 12-year-old. That's why we're watching him. He's not watching us. <laughs> God, I hope he's not listening to us. <laughs> why? I'm over here... <laughs> <laughs> but Wait, I think I just saw a Mercedes pull. <laughs> no! <laughs> Is John Favreau getting out and opening the door? <laughs> Happy? Is that you? <laughs> uh, okay, so after that scene, it cuts to... We get to see Stark who's back at the Avengers compound yeah. with Rhodey. Rhodey, yeah. War got the bat, of course. We see him with got the... Some pros- not, not prosthetic. Stark, like a half a suit. Yeah. Shall we say? Like, kind of uh, like a... He, uh, Captain, or, um, what, what, is he, uh, Lieutenant Rhodey? I think so. Now he's Lieutenant Dan with his magical legs. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're back at the compound again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Rhodey, uh, Stark, he's helping him, doing some rehab. He's built some tech for him with his legs. He's some, getting like, used to it. Some, like, that, like, help them walk. It just looks like a full-on suit, almost, like, from the waist down. Well, it was like, the, it looked, from the way it looked, it was like the skeletal system yeah, 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 of the yeah, suit. Yeah, 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 right, right. Just to, like, brace his legs so yeah. they can actually, like, function. And it was really a great scene man i mean this is the first time that we're not punching faces and necks we're not you know doing superpowers or suits. Man's not kick, getting kicked in the nuts yeah man's not getting kicked in the nuts spider-man's not talking <laughs> <laughs> marking out for everybody it was just a really really beautiful scene mm-hmm. and then tony gets a package <laughs> um. now this is touching and Hilarious at the same time, <laughs> as only again Robert Downey Jr. can be. Yep. And Don Chittle, to his credit, man, he is his fucking. Like, it's Abbott and Costello yeah. in every movie. We have not <laughs> given Don Chittle enough yeah. credit in this podcast <laughs> or the last one, <laughs> dude. He is awesome as War Machine. He is awesome as Rhodey, <laughs> yeah. and like just the back and forth, second banana to Robert Downey. Oh my god! <laughs> you want to tell this one? It's it. the legend, another legendary Stan Lee. Oh, cameo! Cameo. This could be in the top three, if not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> He's a FedEx delivery guy. Oh, I got a package here for a, a Mr. Tony Stank. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Stank and yeah. Brody without missing a beat. Miss, this is Mr. Stank right here. <laughs> By the way, never letting that go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> table for one table <laughs> table for one Mr. Stank we'll put you over here by the bathroom <laughs> there you go Mr. Stank <laughs> oh my god that was the second time that I remember your laugh making me <laughs> echoing through the theater <laughs> the Ant-Man moment and the, the war machine moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, you, you got it right. <laughs> Mr. Stank over here. <laughs> and, and that package was a letter from Steve Rogers. Yeah. Because he's like, am I, he's gone. He's vanished. Yeah. Him and Bucky are, are out. Yeah. Writes him a letter. Tell him that, you know, it's wrong now. And... You know, that, that's a really a credit to... Uh... The letter is really a credit to uh, Steve's personality. I'm Captain America, man. Yeah. He'll always do the right thing. Yeah. At least in his mind. He'll never lie. That's why I would... Remember Tony Fudd? Did you know? Yeah. I didn't know it was him. Did you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, remember? It was like, it wasn't him. Mm-hmm. He was under the mind control. Yeah. There, uh, I don't care. <laughs> but he'll never lie to you. He'll always stand up for you and always do the right thing. Some, Dude, that's Marvel fucking... Some straight dick. <laughs> that's right. Some straight dick. Some he was giving dick. Iron Man the straight dick this time. That's right. In letter form. Old school. He writes a letter. <laughs> Doesn't shoot him a text or an email or a twit. Probably does a great... <laughs> I'm imagining uh, Steve that is very good calligraphy. He's <laughs> using a quill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my side. It hurts from laughing. (sighs) And enclosed is, you know, a letter explaining, you know, when you need me, I got your back, essentially. And enclosed is a burner phone. 
But he also said, you know, it's like, what was it? What was it, part of the letter where he's like, you know, I think my biggest fault, but I like to say my biggest strength is my faith in people. Yeah. And for the most part, they've never let me down. And they're showing these flashbacks as he's reading the letter in Steve Rogers' voice. Somehow, well, not somehow. He's fucking like I said. He's Captain America, minus the shield. Even <laughs> he's on. He made his way into the raft, and he broke fucking Ant Man, Falcon, all the guys that took the fall for him, so him and Bucky could leave that airport and get to Siberia. Yeah. Then Bucky came back and got him out. Yeah. And they're gone. <laughs> yeah. And what is it? Thunderbolt Ross gets a phone call. When Tony finishes reading the letter. Um, there's an urgent call. Uh, the raft has been. There's been a breach in the raft from Thunderbolt Ross. Put him through, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold no, on. Don't, don't put me on him. <laughs> and he's watching the little red light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it uh, it shows. Uh, and it cuts. Uh, you know some. That's that's when the credits roll. And then it shows... Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's the end of the movie, which left me with some questions. And they, they, you know, after the, like, initial credits, they show... The mid-credits. The mid-credit, yeah. I call it the mid-credits scene. Uh, if I don't call it, you know, I don't call it. <laughs> it shows Cap and Bucky in this... My, it still doesn't got an arm. Yeah, he, he one still arm doesn't Bucky. Have, yeah, one arm. One arm Buck. How do you get Bucky out of a tree? Wave at him. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in this like crazy high tech looking lab, and he's like, and Cap says to Bucky, "Are you sure?" And, he, and Bucky says, "I'm not. In, I'm still not in control of my own mind. Until we can fix this, it's better if I'm on ice. It's better for everybody." Yeah. Oh my God! See, Bucky. Yeah, man. He grew up with the same values as Cap. Dude, he was Cap before Cap was yeah. Cap. I mean, think about it. You know, remember he was a scrawny little kid? Fucking, like, sorry, man. They were best friends. There was a bro. Fucking Bucky, you know, something happened to Cap. Bucky would be rocking the crossbow. <laughs> like, Chewie, <laughs> boom! <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bucky does. So, yeah. They put him in ice. Yeah, they put him in a, a chamber where they freeze him. Oh, they got all these doctors monitoring him and everything. Yeah. You just see, like, where the fuck are they? Yeah, it's high tech, crazy. Yeah, like, it's like way past. And it normal. ain't shield. No, not shield. No Shield's shield. No more. Yeah. Officially. <laughs> and then so. <clears throat> he So Cap walks out and he walks in. Stares at the, out the window. Stares out the window like we do. I know, we just. I just ponder life. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Beautiful outside today. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start talking to you that way. Like, you know what? You know what I'm saying? Soap operas. You ever watch soap opera? They always talk with their backs to each other. For like, one's looking at it, the other one's got their back to them. Who talks like that? <laughs> he was doing that. He was just pondering, looking out the window. And who walks up? T'Challa. 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 They are in Wakanda. Wakanda. He's like, you know what Cap say. You know if, you, if they find out you have him here, they'll come for him. Let them try. <laughs> and it does this pan out of, and it shows the beautiful jungles of Wakanda and a the giant, misty rainforest. And just a giant Black oh. Panther statue. Oh, when I saw that, like, yes, like, bitch! <laughs> the size of a building. Oh my god. And then cut more credits. Yeah. And then you have to pee. Oh, and Marvel like, testing bladder since 2005. <laughs> yeah. And you're waiting there and you're like, because there, there's, there's another end credit scene. And the PSS. PSS. And this yeah. is the huge nod to the comics. Love this one. So what is it? Should I tell this one? Yeah. Right. Oh my god. This is a nod to early, early, old, old, old school Spider-Man. It shows Peter Parker with his new web shooters and everything. He's like, god damn, this is oh, itchy. Oh, hold uh, Peter, who'd you get in a fight with? Yes, that's right. Yeah, Marissa Tomei. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I mentioned you, you that. You wouldn't know him. It, it's Steve. Steve from Two Six. No, you don't know him. He's Two Six with the overbite. <laughs> Steve from Brooklyn. Steve from Brooklyn. Oh my god! <laughs> what are you talking about that? Did we yeah. talk about that earlier? I think we didn't talk about that in the other po- in the last podcast. Oh, the, so there I was cried. A, a fight scene between like everybody. Oh, talk about the airport scene. Yeah, the battle a, royal. Yeah, during the battle royale. Uh, there was a fight scene between Spider-Man and Cap. And, you know, Spider-Man started to get the upper hand. Cap flips it around, you know. And Spider-Man's underneath one of those, like, walkway things that you go enter planes on. 
and Cap like throws his uh, shield at one of the stands. It come falls down. That thing does not follow the laws of, of physics. <laughs> <laughs> he throws it, <laughs> it, and he drops the thing on Spider Man, which was really impressive. It was one of those amazing Spider Man strength moments where he's holding it up. That's what I loved about it because see, you look at Spider Man. People who know Spider Man, people who don't know Spider Man, it doesn't matter. Like, you look at Spider-Man, you automatically think, okay, he can crawl on walls, he shoot webs, he does this. He, yeah. You know, it, it depends on how much you know him. He's not known for being, str- he's strong. FYI, Spider-Man is strong as hell. Yeah. He makes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but he makes Chuck Norris look like a pussy. Ooh. Yeah, I said bold, it. Bold. Bold. Write your comments, I dare you. <laughs> I'm commenting, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're like 50 and a half minutes in. They're going to finish the podcast. Oh. So <laughs> so he's standing there holding up this walkway. Yeah. And Cap says, hey, kid, where are you from? You Queens. Got, you got a lot of spirit, kid. Where are you from? Queens. Oh, the look on Cap's face was like Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, my God. <laughs> that Number one, That's I read that right out of the comics. Number two, I had spent a few years of my childhood on the East Coast, so I'm very fond of it. So I got a lot of pride for there, as my a certain friend of mine might know. <laughs> Number three, Ryan and I were talking, well, actually, I was talking about it. Ryan just had to endure me babbling about it. <laughs> and I, I go, if they do stuff like that, I'm just be like reduced to crying like a little girl. Yeah. Before and, the movie even came out, he was like, they better do this in the movie. Well, I said a lot of they better. I mean, I, I, I was going regardless. You know, I better see Baron Zemo in the pink mask. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, wouldn't it be awesome? Not they better, but wouldn't it be awesome if they, you know, threw little things like that, you know? <sighs> and they did. And I'm just like... <laughs> and the first time I saw it, I was with my wife. So she looks over at me. She's like, oh. You're, you're wiping away a solitary tear. You're crying. Tear. You're crying again. What now? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe I let you stick your dick in me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh, I'm crying. And then when you and I went saw it the next day, <laughs> I'm still well enough. You're looking over at me, going, "No, oh, God, <laughs> move over another seat." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just moments like that, awesome. Yeah. So, so. That's why him saying to Aunt May, Steve from Brooklyn, oh. was so important. And that kid just nailed it. Yeah. I cannot wait for Homecoming. Oh, me either. I am so excited. Did you see the, the little thing for it? Like, you see, like, it's coming out uh, next year? Yeah. Year after? 2017. You see the writing for it? The advertisement? Yeah. Spider Friends. It looks like Spider, Spider-Man is amazing friends. <laughs> like that old... I used to watch Saturday morning cartoons. It's written in the same way as that. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, man. I mean, like I said, I'm not ashamed to admit it. There's moments like that. Like I said, I might have said it last week or the week before or whatever. My whole existence now revolves around, I'm surrounded by make pretend. <laughs> and I'm a middle-aged guy. So it takes a lot to fucking get me excited about something. Or re- take me back to my childhood. Dial, dial my clock back, man. And this and did when, it. There when, was a lot of when moments. Peter was playing with that new web shooter. Oh, my God. You see some... Uh, some lights. Some lights come out. And he's like, Aunt May, can you shut the door? Oh, thanks, May. And she gives him a little ice pack for yeah, his for eye. eye. And she shuts the door. And you just see the, 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 the spidey flashlight yeah. on the ceiling. Of his... It's the spider face flashlight. Yeah. And that... I mean, you can take it for what it's worth. A little cheesy, but it was in the comics, and he used to use it to, you know, help, you know, fight crime and, and put the flash, you know, mm-hmm. the, the spotlight on, you know, Green Goblin or, yeah. or you know, Mysterio. <laughs> or, but there was like, if you look around it, there was a lot of different. It looked like, like tech. S- it was like smartphone apps. Stark tech, yeah, different yeah. apps or whatever. So like I think he could just be like, and like open up his like web browser or I something. I because he, okay, which was smart because I was worried about this. I go, I'll be pissed if, I did like the dynamic, I did like the relationship between Tony Stark and Peter Parker. Yeah. I said, going into this movie, I'm going to be a little pissed if Tony Stark just develops everything for yeah. Peter Parker because Peter Parker is smart. He's a genius. He's, He's wicked smart. He is. And that was the thing. I 
think we talked about yeah, it last like week. Went in the he scene. sees himself. Yeah. In him, in yeah. Peter Parker. So I think maybe he just gave him a little upgrade, but he kind of maybe threw some stuff in there that mm-hmm. Peter found. Yeah. And that that's cool. I mean, maybe hopefully it's just that one scene. What works in the comics might not work in the movies all the time. Yeah. You know, I don't want. I'm glad I didn't see Baron Zemo in the pink mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but <laughs> the, the little Spidey flashlight, but the stuff around it, I'm like, because remember he's like, God, this itches. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and he hit that button by accident and that shit came on on the ceiling. Yeah. And it, not so much the Spidey, the Spider Man flashlight, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term, I know it sounds ridiculous. Yeah, like you like you pointed out the stuff around it. Yeah, yeah I think Tony might have thrown some surprises in. So I'm totally stoked for. Oh yeah, the, definitely. You know, oh my god, I do have that whole movie top to bottom, and I have a lot of questions mm-hmm. like like that. What does homecoming mean mm-hmm. for us? Yeah, not Spider Man is amazing friends <laughs> because that was one of the trigger words. For the Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've totally forgot about that. It was. That's one of the trigger words. I'm, I, I, and I don't mean to sound like one of those internet speculation people. Yeah. I give two shits about that. <laughs> um, is the... I got a second question. And I don't know the answers to these. I'm just throwing it out there for you people. Yeah. And you. <laughs> uh, what about the Tony Stark-Bucky feud? Is that over? I don't... I don't think so. I don't know. Again, homecoming. Um... Baron Zemo did not die. No? Oh, we totally glossed over that, actually. That's So, the... after the big fight, it shows Black Panther sneaking up on Zemo, pulls off his helmet, and says, so this is what your goal was the whole time. I almost killed the wrong man. Cause That's he, right. He was planning on killing... We are so all over the board when we record. That's fine. <laughs> there I am At rhyming. least on this one, because we're so excited about it. There yeah, I am we're rhyming talking... again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Black pa- B- B- Boba Panther. <laughs> the payoff for that. <laughs> he, he sneaks up, and he's he's got his claws out. He's ready, because he now knows the true killer of his father. That, that big fight with Cap and Bucky and Iron Man, the whole thing we just talked about. Yeah, Black Panther was there the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> he was listening in. Yeah. He's like, oh, that's the real guy. So he, he backs out and follows him out of the building. And Zemo's out there just sitting. He listens to a, a recording of his family on his phone. The last phone call. Yeah. Before they died. We love you. I'm going to bed now, sweetie. And he deletes it. Yeah. So he's planning on putting a bullet in his brain. Yeah, he's done, he's done, his, he's done what he's supposed to do. He's and, tore the Avengers apart. Yeah. So, and Black Panther's standing there, and he's they start talking about revenge. The villain behind this whole movie. Like I said. And Black what, Panther... What do you say? He's like, you are consumed by vengeance. The vengeance is consuming them as we speak. I, I will no longer be part of vengeance. I'm like, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Black Panther, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a really sweet scene, and he he retracts his claws. It, yeah, I slowly go away, you know. And just as Zemo's about to put the gun to his head and pull the trigger, he slips in, puts him in a like a full Nelson, and just puts his fucking hand over the gun. Because remember, his whole suit is yeah. Oh yeah, he he puts his hand over the gun to stop the bullet. Yeah, and then he chokes him out. Yeah, he's like the living is not done with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so Baron Zemo, they show him at the end. Yeah. And they got the little Bilbo Baggins Hobbit fucker, <laughs> which we didn't Well, that we, guy, yeah. the, that guy, that character in comics is a friend of Black Panther's. He's yes. like a diplomatic assistant. The ambassador. Yes, the ambassador. Yeah. Yes. But, so they've got Zemo locked up now. Yeah. After that. In and the same type of thing they had Winter Soldier locked pretty up. Pretty much. Then. But... With all the knowledge that he had, because that that book with all the the trigger words yeah. and all the Hydra stuff, that wasn't the only thing he had. Yeah. So I'm speculating. Another one of my questions that I walked out of the theater thinking of: Baron Zemo comes back and somehow has some way of bringing back the Red Skull. That'd be pretty wicked. Another question number four. Mm-hmm. 
Cap doesn't have the shield. Freed his friends. Bounced out. Yeah, He's what, done. What's he gonna do now? Nomad. <clears throat> Think it'll be the Nomad? Think because uh, I thought at the end in the books, Cap dies. Yeah. Like he gets shot. Uh, Agent Thirteen taking a shot. Boom. Misses. Really about, hits Cap. Yeah, hits Cap. Cap gets killed. Civil War done. Mm-hmm. They kind of touched it. I guess Rhodey was that moment. Yeah. In that where, oh fuck, it just dawned on me. Like the Civil War is going on, people are fighting, but there's a lot more. I mean, you got X Men in the books. You got oh yeah. X Men, Fantastic Four, uh, New Mutants, Old Mutants, um, Avengers, Seriously, West Coast Sp- Avengers. Spider Man alone. Not only was he in main Civil War. There's two like two other Civil War books just for Spider-Man. Just for Spider-Man. Well, they do a whole thing. I have, you know, tons of Civil War. Fantastic Four was split apart. But yeah. I digress. In the movie, I thought, I go, is Cap going to die? You know, is this going to be the one where they kill Cap? Yeah. You know, I'm just, again, dialed in with the books like Zemo with his, I want to see him in a pink mask. <laughs> 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 they went the other way. He didn't, and I, it just dawned on me, like with all that going on, as much as I've sucked this movie's dick, nobody died in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the worst that happened was someone got paralyzed. Yeah, you know, and you never know, you come come back, but they went the other way because they hinted to me, and this is a hard as a hardcore comic reader, Nomad. Mm-hmm. Now, Nomad, forget in the books was circa 1960s Captain America where they played upon real life stuff and Nixon had just gotten I'm not a crook you know <laughs> and so Cap was questioning his government Cap was questioning the people he worked for Cap was questioning America itself yeah so if you look up the definition nomad means man without a country mm-hmm. so he dropped the shield just like he did in the movie dropped his color dropped his suit just like you saw at the end of the movie, and went not nomad. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say rogue, but he didn't go rogue. He went nomad. Did, he did the typical uh, uh, superhero thing. Went on, went on a little walkabout. He did. He went on a walkabout. So that leaves me with that question. That's the biggest question. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, again, speculating on all these questions, people. So feel free to chime in with your thoughts. The last one is, okay, are the Avengers, like, done? Are they broken up? Or will it take someone like Thanos in Infinity War Part 1 to bring them all back together? It's got to do. We're, we're going to see yeah. them all come back together. Everyone. Everyone. And we have so much coming out but like before then. Uh, oh, We got Doctor Strange. Fuck yeah, Doctor Strange. Guardians 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm an idiot. We were talking about that last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, when I dropped the uh, Nathan Fillion. Oh yeah, Wonder Man thing. You totally uh, spaced over the. Uh, I didn't the even movie. see it. I, I it. guess my head was up my ass or something. They, okay, what, if you guys go back, if you've heard the podcast where I talk about Wonder Man, Nathan Fillion's playing Simon, mm-hmm. what, aka Wonder Man. Wonder Man, the character, he stops um, being an Avenger, becomes an actor, becomes an actor. They showed a picture from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 of a, a poster, po- that movie he was poster in. of Simon Williams playing, and I didn't even pay attention, I didn't even touch on it because I didn't even notice it, I guess my head was up my ass or something. Tony Stark, the biography. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, really? Yeah. I missed that? Jesus. So, we got November, Doctor Strange, uh, Twenty November 2016, Doctor Strange. Yes. May 2017, Guardians 2. Woohoo! July 2017, Spider Man Homecoming. Oh. Then November. Thwip, thwip, thwip. <laughs> <laughs> That's in my pants. <laughs> November 2017, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. I get... February 2018, Black Panther. Oh. And then Avengers Infinity War, Part 1, May 2018. <laughs> oh yeah, that is awesome. That gives them a chance. I mean, that that this movie, awesome, perfect. What are other complimentary words <laughs> and offensive at the same time? No, I'm just kidding. This movie is 
fucking metal, dude. I mean, <laughs> go see this movie. You got anything else to say about this? Um, no. Uh, um, Spider-Man was awesome. Oh. Tom Holland's is awesome. I would love to go to Wakanda. <laughs> right? Looks like a beautiful place. And uh, that's about all I got. Um, so, oh, you have one more thing to add? I got one more thing. When it comes to movies so far, make mine Marvel and have a day. <laughs> Thank you, guys.